what's going on my fellow rock and rollers don't forget to hit the bell notification icon if you want to be notified every time i put out a new video on my channel now the mid 90s were a difficult time for guns and roses original rhythm guitarist izzy stradlin left the group in 1991 after becoming sober and being frustrated in dealing with frontman axel rose on both the musical and business level not helping things was that no one else in the band was sober as well. Stradlin would be replaced temporarily by guitarist Gilby Clark until he was eventually fired in 1994. Rose would fire Clark without consulting any of the other members of the band. And without a rhythm guitarist, Rose brought in his childhood friend, a guitarist named Paul Tobias, who would play on the band's cover of Sympathy for the Devil for the interview with the Vampire soundtrack in 1994. And as the band looked to write their follow-up to 1991's Use Your Illusion record, the band needed a new rhythm guitarist, and one musician who jammed with the band as a potential replacement was Zach Wilde. Here's a clip from MTV from 1995 discussing the possible collaboration. While sources close to Guns N' Roses confirm a report in the new issue of Metal Edge magazine that Slash has been jamming with former Ozzy Osbourne guitarist Zach Wilde. Whether it was a whim or an audition for a Snake Pit touring slot or as a replacement for Gilby Clark and GNR is not yet clear, but we'll keep you posted. So you're probably wondering what happened. Well, stay tuned to find out. In late January of 1995, Kerrang! magazine published an article which featured an interview with Zach Wilde where he first revealed he spent a week jamming with Guns N' Roses. The article would state that frontman Axl Rose invited Zach to jam with the band and Rose, for his part, went through a pretty terrible year in 1994, starting out with his two former lovers, including ex-wife Erin Everly and former girlfriend Stephanie Seymour suing him. According to an interview Wilde gave to Rolling Stone in 2000, talking about the week he spent with the band, he'd say, there were never any melodies, there was never any lyrics. I'd say, dude, referring to Axel, did you come up with any lyrics yet? And he's like, dude, I got people suing me right now. And he's on the phone with lawyers 24 seven. I'd be on the phone with him and he'd be telling me about all these strategic moves his lawyers were making. I was listening to him playing Axis and Allies on the phone. And he was like, I can't come up with lyrics right now. They'd be about every other lawsuit I got going on. And apparently Rose was enthusiastic about the possibility of guitarist Slash and Wilde doing harmonies together on an upcoming Guns N' Roses record. Bassist Duff McKagan reflected on Wilde's involvement in the band in his 2011 autobiography revealing, Zach brought energy and enthusiasm that was lacking within Guns at the time. We can build on this legacy, he said excitedly. We can make something great. Listen to this. He saw a piano against the wall and sat down and elegantly played it. I had no idea he could play piano at all, much less like this. We recorded a few demos with him, but nothing panned out. One of the demos that Wilde would record with Guns N' Roses ended up on Black Label Society's debut record, as the guitarist would tell the My Guns N' Roses forum, revealing the following. One of the riffs that ended up on the first Black Label Society record was Rose Petal Garden. The stuff that I wanted to do eventually would have been like Guns N' Roses on steroids, man. Here's an interview with Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash, revealing why he thought the collaboration didn't sound right. He's just a good friend that we jammed with, because now that Gilby's not in the band, Axel was like, well, what about Zach? You like Zach, right? And I was like, well, yeah, but we don't sound right. It's, it doesn't sound right with, like, two heavy lead guitar players. Um, there's no... Like the off, the, usually Guns N' Roses has an, an off rhythm and a main lead sort of riff. And so now me and Zach just play the same thing. Right. But that's just because we're both lead guitar players. So as much as I love Zach, I don't, we haven't made any decision. I, I told Axel, I said, look, I'm going to be gone until August touring with Snake Pit. We'll talk about it when I get back. Apart from the fact that the collaboration didn't sound right, there was another reason things didn't work out. It's important to note that during this time, Wilde was also playing with Ozzy Osbourne as part of his 1995 album Osmosis, which was to be Ozzy's triumphant return after calling it quits in the early 90s. One part of this whole story that's often overlooked and underreported was that both Guns N' Roses and Zach Wilde shared the same manager. Ozzy Osbourne was getting ready to tour behind Osmosis and needed to know whether Zach Wilde would be joining him and during this time, Wilde was waiting to hear from Guns N' Roses camp. Either way, Ozzy was unhappy with the communication from Wilde, telling an interviewer, The next day I said to Sharon, That's it, he's gone, it's over, referring to Wilde. And it wasn't because I was jealous. Hey, if he joins Guns N' Roses and makes a million dollars, fine. 
All I wanted was a straight answer from him, but he didn't show me that respect Ozzy would remember. Wilde would reveal that things with Guns N' Roses would eventually fall through following his one week stint with the band, as by February of 1995 Slash would be out on tour promoting his side project Snake Pit, while former guitarist Izzy Stradlin would make a temporary reappearance in the spring of 1995 and write some demos with Duff McKagan. Wilde would end up having a chat with Axl Rose shortly after everything fell through, and he would reveal to the same Guns N' Roses form, I saw Axl not so long ago and I said, what the F happened? And Axl goes, well, Zach, I heard you wanted $2 million up front and your own tour bus. And Wilde would end up being replaced in Ozzy's band by guitarist Joe Holmes until 2001, when Wilde eventually returned to play with the Prince of Darkness. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think Guns N' Roses would have sounded like with Zach Wilde. And do you guys think it could have been a good collaboration? Let me know. And thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And if you have suggestions for future topics, let me know in the comment section below. Take care.